Greetings, everyone. This is Terry Naturally with another edition of Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning from 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And we are here primarily for you. We are here to share information with you because no one is responsible for our health but us, you and I. You and I are responsible for our health. The drug companies don't want you healthy because their stock climbs, skyrockets because of the amount of drugs they are selling. They want to satisfy their shareholders. They're looking for new ways to make money. So they're not going to tell you how to be healthy because you are the best customer when you are sick. They're best customer. And doctors can't tell you how to be well and healthy as they don't know either how to be well and healthy. And many of them are not. They never have more than a few hours of education in the entire med school. They're all their medical training. They only get a few hours, about an hour a year. It's amazing how little they know on how to keep us healthy. And drugs, even though you may take drugs, and they may help you reduce the condition that you have, doesn't make you healthy. And drugs have major side effects. So these are the risks you're taking when you take drugs as the answer to your problems. When really, in reality, I believe that if you change your diet and follow a low-carbohydrate diet and for more information on that, you can go to the ketogenic diet. There are many sites on the internet that will help you understand more about the ketogenic diet. But there are a few sites that I prefer. One is called the ketogenicdietresource.com. The other one is the Diet Doctor. And then you can follow Dr. David Perlmutter and Dr. William Davis. Also, you can follow Dr. Wolfgang Lutz, L-U-T-Z. These are some of the doctors that advocate a low-carb diet, a grain-free diet. We are sick because of what we are eating. And we are not eating. So the best way to be healthy, I think, is not what you eat, but what you don't eat. Stop eating the junk. Stop eating the carbohydrates and sugar. Get more exercise. Get a good night's sleep. And if you say, well, I can't sleep well. Well, that's because you have the wrong diet. Change your diet. And I believe if you change your diet and you have more exercise, you sleep better, and you take a good multivitamin and mineral supplement, and the one I prefer is not a a one-a-day. You can put a lot of vitamins and minerals in a a one-a-day. You can include all the vitamins and minerals. But because a a one-a-day is such a small volume, you can't put any meaningful levels of all of those vitamins and minerals in a a one-a-day. So it's like spitting in the ocean when you take a one a day. Doesn't do anything. One spit in the ocean is not going to raise the tide. It's not going to make any difference. And a one a day 
just doesn't have any room. And if you did have a one a day with adequate levels of vitamins and minerals that the body requires, it would be about the size of a golf ball. Not easy to swallow. So if you take a good array and full spectrum of all the vitamins and minerals in meaningful levels that the body requires to be healthy, and if you look at all the different vitamins and minerals and what they do for the body, better than drugs. It has shown tremendous research on all the vitamins and minerals, but nobody tells you that. Nobody cares to tell you that. Everybody is looking for new drugs. New drugs to make us healthy. It's not drugs. It's food, vitamins, minerals, as food is your best medicine, and then because our food is not of the best quality, even though growing today, most of it is growing on depleted soil and then sprayed artificial fertilizer stored in warehouses picked green so that it survives until it is sold and then all the preparing and process, processing of the food and even storage destroys vitamins and minerals in the food that we are buying today. So I think it makes great sense to take a multiple vitamin and mineral supplement that provides all the vitamins and minerals in the meaningful levels of those nutrients. So that means you would be taking somewhere between four, two to four tablets a day of a given formula. And I can't give you that formula right now because it's too lengthy. But you will do better. If you go on a ketogenic diet or a paleo diet or generally a low-carb diet, reduce your carbohydrates from four to 500 grams of carbohydrates, which is the average of Americans today, down to around 75 grams of carbohydrates a day, eat plenty of good high protein, plenty of good quality fats, avoid the bad fats, of course, but fats are important for us. Cholesterol is important for us. We are not getting the nutrients we are required to have to be healthy. That's why we are unhealthy. That's why we're sick. That's why we have illnesses. That's why we have heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes. And you could go on and on through the entire array of the conditions that are being treated today by doctors with drugs. Treat your body with medicine from nature, food, and then a good, high-quality vitamin and mineral supplement. And in three to six months, you're going to be astounded by the health that you have achieved in six months. Six months is nothing. We go through decades of our life abusing our body. And if we can reverse disease, and we will reverse disease, and prevent disease by changing the diet, by including more exercise or activity, getting a good night's sleep, and in six months you will have reversed much of the damage that you have been doing for the last three, four, five, seven decades, whatever it is. You can get healthy. You will get healthy if you want to. Now, how bad do you want to? Bad enough to give up bread, pasta, grains, desserts, sugar, and all the carbohydrates that convert to sugar? You can be very, very healthy at very little expense and very little, little, no damage to your body. Drugs... And I know people that are on six, seven, eight, nine drugs a day. 
I read it to one gentleman that was on 28 different prescriptions. Think of what that does in the body. That's like putting a time bomb in the body. When is it going to blow up? Into a heart attack or a stroke or other diseases. And then you'll need more drugs to compensate for the drugs that cause the side effects. Folks, you can get as healthy as you want. Well, some people may not be able to get as healthy as they want because they have done so much damage already. Maybe they have bone on bone in their joints. You're not going to rebuild those joints. But you will get rid of the pain because when you go on a low-carbohydrate diet, you'll end up with an anti-inflammatory diet. So you'll get rid of the inflammation that's causing the pain. Just with diet alone, you'll get rid of 80 to 90% of your pain. Sugar and sweets and carbohydrates and sodas all cause inflammation. This whole country is a nation of inflammation. And this inflammation causes all of our diseases. 98% of all of our diseases, for sure. So, all these conditions that are being treated by drugs could be better, more successfully, and more effectively treated with food and the change of your lifestyle. That's all we need to do. That's why we're here. Hopefully that we connect with you. Hopefully that you can use this information to make choices if you want to. Choices. Every day, it's choices. What we eat, what we wear, how we drive, what we... All these are choices. And the choices that Americans are making today is to make America the sickest country in the world based on the World Health Organization, and the CDC. We are the sickest country in the world. And that's why we've had so much infection and viral infection, COVID-19, Delta, all these conditions are caused by a sick body. The sicker we are, the more easily we are influenced by the virus to have viral infection, serious side effects, more complications, and even death. Because when we are attacked by a virus, we are so sick we can't fight it. We don't have the immune system that a healthy body has. All the sugar and sweets and carbohydrates undermined our immune system, compromised a healthy immune system to an unhealthy immune system, and then we have more complications. If we're healthy, oh, we may get sick a day or two. We may be mildly sick, even maybe moderately sick, but we're not going to end up in the hospital. We're not going to end up dying. Get healthy. And you will prevent and reverse many of your diseases. You'll get off drugs. You'll get off prescriptions. But you have to want to. Nobody can do it for you. You know the old saying, You can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Well, maybe I'm the horse. Or I'm trying to lead you to to the water and make you drink. You know, I want you to. I can't make you. You can feel fantastic no matter how old you are. You can have more energy, less fatigue, tiredness, sleep well. But it's Take some sacrificing. 
It takes some changing. So you have to decide how well you want to be and if you care to be well. So today we're going to share more information with you. And like us being sick, humans getting sick, you know, dogs get sick too. And they get cancer too. So we'll talk about how to treat your dog with cancer. How do we treat it naturally? We'll look at a closer look at cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone that's produced by the adrenal glands and primarily under stress. Our cortisol levels increase when we're under stress but causes all kinds of complications. And how to avoid a workout hangover. And we'll talk about some new news about melatonin and MS, multiple sclerosis. And how do you fight off respiratory infections? And that's what the virus does. The virus creates a storm and then eventually respiratory infection. And if not able to get under control, that person may die. So we'll talk about more and more things today, but more information every week right here, Saturday and Sunday. So make sure you tell your family and friends. And if you want to learn more, this past year, I have written 10 books. And some of them are already available on Terry Talks Nutrition website, my website, terrytalksnutrition.com. And they're available on Amazon. Once you understand more about some of these natural medicines, you'll be healthier. So here are some statistics on dogs. According to the best data we have today, one in four dogs, one in four, will get cancer. Half of all dogs over age 10 will die with or from cancer. But there are some dogs, some breeds of dogs, that are particularly prone to cancer, such as Rottweilers, Boxers, German Shepherds, Poodles, and Golden Retrievers. It's such a shame. I lost what I could say my best buddy. In fact, I had two Australian Shepherds, Buddy and Bella. Buddy died a couple of years ago. And I still think of him every day. Died from cancer. He had cancer in the lungs, cancer in the nose. And they could not get it under control. Nothing, nothing worked. So there's ways that we can use natural methods to help prevent cancer in dogs. You know, I mentioned golden retrievers. Unfortunately, over 60% of all golden retrievers will die from cancer. Common types of cancer in dogs include melanoma, which is a type of skin cancer. And bone cancer. So they are prone to various kinds of cancer and some breeds are more prone to cancer than others. And you know what? Diet and exercise. We talked about that at the beginning of the program. 
that a way for us to get healthier. And while that's important for people, it's also important for our pets. Diet. Don't feed your dog table scraps. Don't feed them what you eat. You're sick. According to all the monitoring by the World Health Organization, being the sickest country in the world, that makes your pets sick if you feed them what you're eating. Feed them what they should have. You know, you, you go through coffee uh, drive throughs and they want to give you a pup cup. Your dog wasn't meant to eat that. So feed your pets the best quality of food you can. Stay away from long lawn chemicals. Don't spray your lawn with pesticides and chemicals. You know, dandelions are a beautiful plant. I let them grow like crazy. Sometimes in the spring, my yard is nothing but dandelions. Some people want all those dandelions killed. So they go around and they spray each one individually. And studies have linked professionally applied lawn pesticides do increase the risk of bladder cancer and lymphoma in dogs. Why do you want to spray pesticides anywhere, anytime? Get rid of the Roundup. To heck with the beautiful lawn. And then exercise your dog. According to the 2014 data, 53% of dogs and 58% of cats are overweight or obese. That's almost the same statistics for humans. So we feed our animals what we are eating. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? Even children. Sometimes when I'm shopping, I, I look at some people who walk in with their children, and if the adults are overweight, the kids are overweight. And obese. 18% of children are obese. And these extra pounds in pets. You know, all that weight you carry isn't just fat. You say to yourself, well, I'm out of shape. I should lose 40, 50 pounds or whatever. But those fatty cells produce inflammation chronically. And those extra pounds in pets does the same. It leads to inflammation and cancer. Obesity is a platform for all kinds of diseases. It isn't just being overweight. And that's why, unfortunately, the obese, whether they were white, black, or Hispanic, were the ones more prone to infection from COVID-19. Also, this inflammation, and we can get rid of all the inflammation in our body. We can. Get rid of the foods that cause inflammation. And that is carbohydrates and sugar and vegetable oil. Omega-6 fatty acid is a pro-inflammatory fatty acid. Oh yes, we need a little bit but it's very, very little compared to how much is consumed in the American diet. We should have a ratio of 1 to 1 or maybe a 2 to 1 of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. And because soybean oil, corn oil, and all these cheap vegetable oils are used in almost all of our preparation of food and processed foods, prepared foods, that our omega-6 to omega-3 is a 20 to 30 times more 
than in what is supposed to have in the body's chemistry. So these extra pounds in PET not only lead to the inflammation and cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and even makes arthritis worse. So if you have a dog with arthritis, hip dysplasia, joint inflammation, get a better diet for your dog. So get up and get yourself up and your pet moving. It'll do you both good. Take your pet for a long walk on a regular basis. We can get better. Our pet, pets can get better. It's all a matter of choices, friends. That's all it is. We can choose to live better, healthier, by selecting the right food, the right level of activity, better sleep. And all of these will be even better and more easy to do once we start feeling better. One begets the other. So it's time to make some changes. And they're not expensive changes. So what can we do for a dog besides changing the diet? Well, we found in studies, in research studies, that curcumin is excellent for cancer prevention and cancer treatment. I'm going to pause as I get into this section right here. But remember, I'm Terry Naturally, and this is Terry Talks Nutrition. And we're going to go into some commercials. So don't go away. We'll come back right after these messages. I'm Terry Naturally. Back right after this. Welcome back, my friends. This is Terry Naturally. This is our second portion of the program, Terry Talks Nutrition. We're here every Saturday and Sunday morning, 8 o'clock until 9 o'clock Central Standard Time. And as we went into the break, we were talking about feeding our animals correctly, more animal food than human food. We should not be giving our pets table scraps or feeding them what we eat. Because we're sitting down at night eating a bowl of ice cream. We think the pets should have a bowl of ice cream. They weren't met, meant excuse me, to eat ice cream. So we also talked about curcumin as being a natural treatment and prevention for cancer in dogs. Curcumin is very safe and effective for both dogs and cats. I have a more difficult time putting together a protocol for cats. Cats are very, um, what should I, the right word, more finicky. They're harder to treat. They have a more of a delicate, delicate chemistry. Where dogs, you know, you can feed them almost anything and they'll survive. They have operated on dogs and taken out all kinds of things out of their stomach that they ate and they survived. That can also be found in cats too. But it's easier to give dogs. But in curcumin, highly effective for both dogs and cats. And what does curcumin do? It stops cancer cells from forming. Just stops them from being there. Reducing the amount of cancer cells production. And their multiplication and spreading of cancer cells. In some cell studies, exposure to curcumin reduced canine bone cancer cell proliferation by up to 70%. In overweight cats, 
supplementation with an enhanced absorption curcumin bound to turmeric essential oils given for eight weeks significantly reduce certain markers of inflammation. Just eight weeks, two months. And I said in the beginning of the program that if you make these changes, like diet, like exercise, like sleep, you would feel, you would be amazed at how you reversed your health and how you dropped your drugs or got off some of your drugs. Now, I'm not telling you to do that cold turkey. That's something that you have to decide with the conversation, in a conversation with your physician. But because you are so healthy now, you don't need those drugs. You only need those drugs because you're unhealthy. But you can become healthier in a matter of three to six months. And when you reduce significantly certain markers of inflammation, inflammation is the root cause of all disease. All disease, including cancer. And curcumin is a very, very powerful anti-inflammatory compound. And just like people, dogs can't absorb curcumin very well. When they swallow it, primarily most of it stays in the intestinal tract. And there it'll do some good, of course. But you really want to get some of that curcumin into the bloodstream to affect all the other cells in the body, wherever. Every little corner of your body, you want protection. So increasing the absorption systemically is the task today by scientists. How do we get the majority of the curcumin out of the intestinal tract, into the blood, so it circulates throughout the entire body, making the entire body much more healthy? Well, they found that using turmeric essential oil in a patented process, increased absorption by 700%. 700%. Over the plain curcumin that many people are trying to use for themselves and their pets. So, what I recommend for a small dog, and don't worry about how much you give a dog, it's not going to have any side effects. So, for a small dog, I recommend. Well, about 375 milligrams of curcumin that is bound to turmeric essential oils. And for a large dog, I would recommend 750, a double dose. 750 milligrams for large dogs. Now this is good for not only cancer. When you take an anti-inflammatory, especially natural, like curcumin, like grapeseed extract. They have done research at MD Anderson Hospital in Houston, Texas, and they came out with studies that shows that curcumin is as effective as any steroid or pain-killing drug. And because curcumin's powerful anti-inflammatory effects, it is also a great option for every other disease in your body. For relieving pain, such as arthritis pain, or any pain, pain from cancer. And it can be used in pets. It's easy to give a dog capsules, soft gels, of curcumin for cats probably the best thing to do is to open up a hard shell capsule dump the powder in the cat's food 
and mix it in. I have never found a cat yet that didn't like it. It works well on dogs and cats. And you. Curcumin is one of the most powerful, I guess I could say it this way. I believe everybody should take a good multivitamin and mineral supplement because we're not sick because we're not taking enough curcumin. We're not sick because we're not taking enough grapeseed extract. These are natural medicines that are as effective as drugs and sometimes more effective than drugs. And the bonus is they don't have side effects like drugs do. But the body doesn't need curcumin. The body doesn't need grapeseed extract. Yes, I will never give up mine. I take mine. I take curcumin every day. I take grapeseed extract. I take a ton of vitamins and minerals and other capsules and tablets of herbal products and other accessory food factors. But I believe everybody should start with the vitamin and mineral supplement because that's what the body has to improve their body chemistry and function. We have survived for millions of years on food. Not anything else. We need vitamins and minerals. And if you don't take vitamins and minerals that are required by the body to be healthy, then we have side effects Conditions that arise from the lack of vitamins and minerals. And those conditions have symptoms like clues that something's happening wrong. And then the FDA has given the drug companies approval to come up with a drug for that condition. When actually the condition was caused by a lack of vitamin or mineral. You'll be a much, much, much healthier if you get a good quality vitamin and mineral supplement that covers all the nutrients. But you need to take two to four a day. Two to four tablets a day. You can't put all those vitamins and minerals in a one a day. And I'm not suggesting any any brand name. I'm not saying any one a day brand name. Any daily one a day Brand, I don't care whose it is, where it is, in the natural industry or in in mass market or pharmacy or wherever. They're not worth spending your money on. There's nothing there to make any difference in your health. And now today, with all the pollution we have, all the pesticide we have, all the unhealthy food that people are eating and COVID and all these infections and all these other conditions. We need more vitamins and minerals at the highest peak optimal level of those nutrients. The best place for your one a day is in the toilet. It just doesn't do anything. I'll give you an example. I have a very good friend a dear friend who is in the health food industry and has a line of supplements. He makes vitamins and minerals. He has a one a day. In that one a day, we need probably 800 to 1200 milligrams of calcium. 800, 800 to 1200 milligrams of calcium. A woman needs 320 milligrams of magnesium. A man needs 420 milligrams of magnesium. These are just basic levels of nutrients. In the one a day, because you can't put anything in a tablet that small. And if it gets bigger, you can't swallow it. And in this one a day my friend makes, and I love this guy, I just don't agree. In his one a day, 
he has 25 milligrams of calcium. Can't put 1,200. You won't be able to swallow it. For magnesium, remember I said women 320, men 420? 10 milligrams of magnesium. But if you didn't know that and you read the label and you said, oh, there's magnesium, oh, there's calcium, oh, there's this, there's this, this, but it's like bird food. There's not enough there to keep a bird alive. That's the problem. So that's why I want a day, and I, I really, really, truly believe that when you buy a one a day, you think, oh, I'm getting all my vitamins and minerals. It's kind of like I would never want to sell you a one a day. If you wanted one and you said, I'm not, I'm not going to walk out of this store unless I buy a one a day. I would say, that's great. Here's why I would not buy a one a day. Please listen to me. This is why I want you to buy a two to four tablet vitamin and mineral supplement and not a one a day. And if you still choose a one a day, then that's okay. That's your choice. But I believe when people buy a one a day and they see all the vitamins and minerals that are in it, but not in any meaningful level that will do anything for the body, they have a false sense of security thinking, oh, I get all my vitamins and minerals. No, you don't. You get them by name, but not by value. Your body requires a certain level of vitamins and minerals, which has been researched by many institutions as to what we need in terms of vitamins and minerals. And this was done a long time ago. Today, I think we even need to up that. Now, many of you have seen the increase of vitamin D in your daily regimen. The FDA still recommends 400 IUs of vitamin D. And many, many people, everywhere I go and I talk in lectures, they are taking 5,000 to 10,000 units of vitamin D, not 400. Our level of nutrients has gone up significantly. The need for it because we're not getting any vitamins and minerals in our food today. They have changed our food. It's genetically modified. It's all kinds of practices of growing food to make food last longer, a bigger crop. So they are trying to change our food for economics not for health. They want food to be big, rosy, you know, like, like apples. Apples are bigger than they've ever been in size-wise. They don't bruise anymore. You can cut them open and they don't brown anymore. They don't have any little tweaks Buy the ones that have the worms and eat around the worm. That's the kind that you want. Apples don't have worms anymore. We have changed for profit. Food is not for nutrition. Food is not made to make us healthy. Food is grown to make more money. So, curcumin for everyone. Take your multivitamin and mineral supplement, two tablets to four tablets a day. Now, it has to be made that way. You can't just take any old formulation and take four tablets a day because you don't have the right ratio. You have to find the right supplement to do that. And then take curcumin. Now you have all the vitamins and minerals and you have a very, very powerful anti-inflammatory with curcumin. So let's take a closer look at a hormone called cortisol. 
C like Charlie, O R like Robert, T like Tom, I S like Sam, O L, cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone produced by the adrenal glands. It's the stress hormone. Steroid hormones that's created in the adrenal glands. You know, there's two adrenal glands in the body. One sitting on top of each kidney. They should be about the size of a kidney bean. They weigh about five grams, very small. But in the course of a year, it only produces one teaspoon of hormones. That's how powerful they are. They keep us very healthy. Now, we could be born with only one kidney. That means we may only have one adrenal gland. Or maybe our adrenals, because of stress or because of a birth defect, our adrenal glands are might be the size of a BB or a pea, not the kidney bean. Size means everything. Normal size produces normal hormone benefits. So this cortisol, in addition to its role in the body's response to stress, cortisol has many important functions in the body to improve the metabolism and the weight management. Yes, it controls your appetite. The higher the level of cortisol based on stress, and that's why people eat when they're under stress. You ever wonder why they eat more? Because the cortisol levels have driven them to binge eat. It raises blood pressure levels. And it compromises the immune system. So we need a low level of cortisol. And while we may not be able to reduce the stress, we can improve Lowering the cortisol. Cortisol levels usually are the highest in the morning and lowest in the evening. Now, if you have chronically high cortisol levels, you will have weight gain, high blood pressure, Decreased bone density. Reduced libido. Mood swings. Increased risk of cancer. In fact, in a recent clinical study, high cortisol levels increased the risk of death from COVID by 42%. So you want to be stress-free. Now, we're not going to be stress-free because we all are challenged with fears, relationships, financial conditions, economics, loss of work, not being able to draw a paycheck, many reasons for stress. But we can keep our body to be able to cope with the stress and inhibit the damage caused by stress. One of the nutrients, or I should say hormone, called DHEA. DHEA is the counterbalance to cortisol. When cortisol levels go high, DHEA goes low. When you bring up more DHEA, it's also produced by the adrenal glands, the cortisol levels come down. So by boosting, DHEA levels can bring cortisol levels back to the normal cycle. Clinical trials compared DHE cortisol ratio across three groups. One group of older people were given a placebo, a fake pill. Another group of older people were given a single dose 
of DHEA. Then they had a young people group untreated in comparisons. So the result of the study supplement the diet or supplementing the individual with DHEA restored to a proper level the DHEA cortisol levels in older adults to levels found in the young adults. They were younger. Their body was actually functioning at a younger level. And their stress levels were reduced. And the damage to the body from stress was reduced. So there are some supporting vitamins to DHEA and cortisol. Vitamin C. We do not store vitamin C in the body. It's water-soluble. But vitamin C is temporarily stored in the adrenal glands, which has a high concentration of vitamin C. And also vitamin C reduces stress-related increases in cortisol levels. The B vitamins indirectly reduce cortisol levels by increasing GABA, G-A-B-A, GABA levels, and restores normal cortisol cycles. In a clinical study of healthy athletes, of course, they have stress. Just the activity, the pounding, whether it be running, weightlifting, football, whatever it is, healthy athletes, that those subjects, participants, with the lowest intake of vitamin C, B1, B2, B6, and niacin, had the highest levels of cortisol. So a combination of the B vitamins and DHEA was a very effective supplement to reduce cortisol levels. And by reducing cortisol levels, cortisol is no longer out of control. You'll be able to get your weight under control. Your blood pressure will come down. You will increase your bone density. You will have an increased level of libido and sexual enhancement. Better mood, less irritability, less anger. And you will be able to help prevent cancer. These are the benefits of lowering cortisol. And your B vitamins along with DHEA will lower your cortisol levels. So you can reduce cortisol levels. So here's kind of a formulation that I like. About 15 to 30 milligrams of DHEA plus 2 to 400 milligrams of vitamin C with a full spectrum of the B vitamins, especially for women. Women need less DHEA than a man. Muscle structure, bone structure, women need less. For men, they would need the same amount of B vitamins, but about 15 to 45 milligrams of DHEA, plus the vitamin C, 200 to 600 milligrams, with a full spectrum of B vitamins. So we're going to pause here. We're out of time already. That hour flies by, but I'm going to have to fly out of here quickly too. But I just want to remind you, you are in charge of your health. You are the only one that can improve your health. You are the only one responsible for your health. you got to do something. And with that, my friends, say a prayer for this crazy, crazy world. God bless you. And bless God bless this great country. Thank you for listening to Terry Talks Nutrition Weekly Show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform, including Apple, Google, and iHeartRadio.